Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are here on Saturday with God's Church of Love online. We're reading from the book, Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sechem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was there in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there buildeth he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto the mountain to the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the right on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Wow. Wow. Now, what I want to discuss is where is your land? Where is God taking you? Hmm. You know how the, the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, right? Where is God taking you? That's something to think about. Now, sometimes God will remove us from everything that is familiar. And it gets very uncomfortable. It feels hairy at times. But God knows what he's doing. He says to us, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to bless you, not harm you. So know that God, whatever he does, there is purpose. Purpose now. God is a God of purpose. He's not a God of happenstance. He's a God of purpose. And he knows what he wants for you. Everything that has happened in your life will come to a pinnacle point. I can't think of the word I'm looking for. It'll all come together and it'll make more and more sense as you look back on the things that have happened in your life. So you don't have to fret. Even your mistakes. Your mistakes and your failures. They all add into the equation. Now, you don't sit there and live a life purposefully committing sin and purposefully committing acts of, uh, let's say, acts that lack wisdom. No, 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 no. We don't do that. But what we want to do is see where God is taking us. We want to ask him. We want to seek his face. God knows what he's doing. God knows why you have the scars you have. God knows why you've suffered the losses you've suffered. God knows why you've been tried in the way, in the manner you've been tried. Now, even with Job, how did God bless him? He, he, he wagered with the devil. The devil brought it up. He wagered with the devil. He said, have you considered my son, Job? And the devil said, I got a wager for you. 
Now, after Job went through seven years of pure, de unadulterated hell, loss, deaths, being broke, I mean, total loss, just crazy, mourning for days. God blessed him after that seven years with double for his trouble. God will give you double for your trouble. You can count on him. You can take that to the bank. So when you're sitting there getting frustrated with God, don't forget that God has plans for you. He knows what he's doing. He knows why he's doing it. He loves you. And see, a lot of times we lose sight of that. We lose sight of God's love because all hell is breaking loose in our lives or we can't figure out why some of our dreams have not come to pass yet. There are some dreams you have that are good dreams. They really are. But they don't line up with God's purpose. If God answers some of your desires, what will end up happening is you will pursue that and totally forsake the way that God had chosen for you, even though you may still be saved and you may not have backslidden per se into sin, but you end up missing the mark where your callings and giftings are concerned and your life, trust me, will never be as full as it will be until you get back in line with God's design for your life. A lot of times, you know, we have a lot of great ideas. We have grandiose ideas, ideas that'll make us look good, smell good, feel good, all of that. But it's not always the ways of God. And they may be very noble dreams and goals, but God may feel like that is not the one that's going to get me to use you the way I need to use you in this kingdom. The lives that will be impacted won't, won't be touched by you while you're over there doing your thing. Now, I know we know that old song, and I know it's old, and I'm going to tell on myself, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. Not with God. Not with God. The thing I love about God is the thing he calls you to do he will give you a love for. He doesn't make you do stuff you hate. He'll give you a love for it. Even if you're not excited about the idea from the beginning, he will give you a love for what he has called you to do. And he will equip you. Matter of fact, he has already equipped you at least a large percentage of it through your experiences before you even got saved. Because he already had his mark on you. He already had his sights on you. Oh, yeah. So when God gets ready to move you and reposition you, you end up having a great falling away. <laughs> Sounds like you know, what the church is going to do in these last days, what they're already doing, the great falling away. But what I'm talking about, I'm coining that expression right now. Because what I'm talking about is you will have loss. You will lose friends. You will lose connections. Some of you will lose money, houses, relationships, marriages. You will lose. Some of you will lose your confidence in God. I'm telling you. Life will do that. But I thank God for his faithfulness. Because through all those roadblocks and obstacles, challenges, he knows where he's taking you and he knows how to get you there. So even if you turn around and head the wrong direction, as long as you're moving, trying to please God, he knows how to redirect you and get you where he wants you to be. 
some of you will have to sever some family relationships at certain times in your life. And God will let you know when those relationships will get more and more sour. God will let you know when he wants you to reach out and God will let you know when he wants you to retreat because there's a working. He's not only working in your life, he's working in theirs as well. And in some ways we, with all our good intentions, can get in God's way. Some of you cannot afford to rescue some of your family members. And I'm talking about the ones that you have, that, that have been a perpetual burden. You have constantly had to come to their rescue. There are times when God is saying, if you leave them alone, I'll help them grow up. I've got to take them through the school of hard knocks. But as long as you stay in the way, they'll remain a, a millstone around your neck which is not what I called you to do. I called you to do something else, but you're caught up in that. God has ways to get to us. He wants to take us on a journey. And through the journey, there are certain areas where that it's like an altar experience. You have a certain experience with God. And God wants you to draw close to him so you can have a sharper ear when he's guiding you. How are you going to hear God guiding you when you've got all these baby chicks? Mommy, mommy, auntie, uncle, brother, daddy, can you come to my rescue? Mm -mm. No, you have to be about God's business. As long as you're there to rescue everybody, they don't have to fend for themselves now, do they? But see, God has a place he wants to get you to. And that place is going to come through the things you have to, you have to go through in your life. You have to get, go down a certain route, let's say. Even if there's a detour down the normal route, and God has allowed that detour because he knows it's going to accomplish something in your life. On the way, you pick up some things that you would not have picked up had you not gone that other way. But he will use that route to get you where you're supposed to go. So you go there and you end up maybe having a flat tire. I'm making an example. Maybe you end up with a flat tire because there was a nail in the road. Now, someone has to come and help you. While they're helping you, you get a tidbit of information that is monumental to where you're going. You would not have gotten that information had you gone your regular route and not gotten a flat tire. Challenges, setbacks, losses, Time seemingly wasted, frustrations, agitations, annoyances, they all play their part in you getting where you're going. Now, let me explain how in some cases, because some of you are looking at me like, yeah, right, whatever. Um, I know you've heard of resistance exercises in the gym. One of the best exercises is swimming because you have the water resisting you, but it doesn't have any negative impact on your joints. Now, when you are exercising, you have to do it deliberately at a certain, uh, at certain intervals, let's say. No less than three days a week really gets the greatest results. However, It takes the resistance. They say the way you lose the most weight, and that's shedding all that old stuff you don't need to drag along with you. The best way to lose weight, the most uh, effective way, is through resistance. Not boom, 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 real fast, but resistance. 
and resistance will make you burn more calories quicker. So that's why the weight room is a great place for burning. Now, I'm not talking for myself. I'm not a member of a gym. I can't afford it. I want to, but anyway. <laughs> but my point to you is in life, God will use the things that come against you, the people that get on your nerves, the over time that you didn't get paid like you should have gotten paid, the flat tire, the having to buy four new tires with money you set aside for something else. All of those things in life are part of your journey. As you resist, you get stronger, don't you? You build up muscle power. That's in the spirit realm. In life, as you meet with resistance, you build up muscle power. As you build up muscle power and you gain wisdom, insight, understanding, God begins to add more. He imparts more into you. Them that's got shall get. You keep a getting and you will get more and more and more. Don't sit, wallow, and complain. Keep getting. Lord, I don't get this one. Would you please open my eyes. What am I supposed to get out of this? Some things you won't get an explanation. And that's where you have to trust God. Just like Abram, he didn't even know where he was going. Didn't even know how to get there. But he trusted God and left everything familiar anyway. Are you willing to leave all that's familiar, everyone that's familiar, everything that is comfortable in your life in order to go the way that God wants you to go? Because it may seem like a hairy thing God is pulling you to. It may seem awkward and, and uncomfortable and, and un, unstable and that there are too many unknown factors. But you have one known factor you can count on, God. God knows all the details. That's all you need to know. And God puts us on a need-to-know basis. And if you don't need to know, baby, he's not going to explain it. That's when trusting God comes into play. Trusting God. Trusting God with your future. Trusting God with your calling, your, your giftings trusting God. It's hard. It's very hard to do. But God knows where he is taking you. I know a woman who met her husband on the road. Handsome guy too. And I mean, he was crazy about her. And he was a man of God. Now, where will your setbacks take you? What blessings may come out of your setbacks? As you go, you may not know where you're headed. You may have nothing but questions. Well, God does not only have all the answers. He is your answer. So as long as you follow him, even if you feel like you're not sure which way you're going, Ask him to redirect you if you're headed in the wrong direction, if you're making the wrong decision. Ask God to shut that down, even if you're excited about it. And trust him through your disappointments. Trust him. Don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't bicker. Trust him. He will take you through. Some of your relationships, I remember one of the hardest relationships for me to let go of, and it brought many tears for many years, was my sister. Once I gave my heart to the Lord, that closely bonded thing we had, it was so beautiful, just disintegrated because we no longer were in agreement. We were in agreement in sin, no problem. 
wonderful to talk to, beautiful. But once I got saved and I tried to minister to her and all of that, once she no longer needed the encouragement and she was ready to go on her own after her family uh, crisis, if I didn't call her for a year, I wouldn't hear from her. And that hurt deeply. That hurt me. But God let me know I, I, I can't hang on to it. I, all I can do is pray for her loved her. I was crazy about her. She was such a source of inspiration in so many ways. Beautiful personality. Mm. She's gone now to be with the Lord. But at that time, mm -mm, I'm telling you, it was really hard for me. It was hard for me when some of my close friends just disappeared out of my life. It, it's difficult when even some of the people in your church, some of the people on your job seem to pull away from you. And it just feels like, Lord, what are you doing to me? I, I need some companionship here. But here's the thing that a lot of us don't get. A lot of us, now here's another thing, think about it. Uh, Abram brought Lot with him, his brother's son. That's his nephew. There ended up being trouble down the road because of that. But one thing I want to say to you is there are times you want to hold on to relationships that will only bring trouble down the road. If God is severing you, just keep on trucking and trust God with the relationship. If it never gets restored, trust that with God too. See, that's the hard part in life. The question marks, the things we don't get. Why would God remove someone who's not a bad person, someone we love so dearly? Why would God remove them from our lives or remove us from their lives? Why would God do that? Because they're not part of your plan. Now that's all I can say. I can't answer anything else because I'm not God. And I still don't know why some of the time that I wanted to spend with my sister, I couldn't, but I couldn't. And that really hurt. It doesn't hurt me any longer, but it hurt then. And I got to a point where I just sat back and said, okay, Lord, just take the hurt out and help me not miss her anymore. And he did that. He really did. And some of you will have relationships that are so distant and so far out of reach. You won't know whether to shake your head, forget about it, or cry. But whatever your reaction, you must, through all of it, through the tears, through the anger, through whatever, you must trust God. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand and you can't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. He alone is faithful and true. He alone knows what is best for you. God bless you. Be encouraged. You have a risen Savior who loves you dearly.